Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of You Should Play. Today we'll be looking at Toshihiro Nagoshi and his team at RGG Studios' latest title, Judgment, or Judge Eyes as it's referred to in Japan. Which I think is the better title, but we'll get into that later. Which was released in last December in Japan, but finally got its worldwide release in June of this year. Now as the local Yakuza team shill that I am, I was extremely excited for this title. I love the Yakuza games, but I'm also incredibly excited to see that RGG Studios is moving out of just Yakuza and trying other things. They've done that in the past with making Binary Domain, which was one of my favorite third-person shooters of last gen, which I featured previously in another video, along with the Fist of the North Star game that came out last year, which I'll probably end up doing a video down the road with. But to my knowledge, those games didn't sell all that well. At least Binary Domain didn't. If the Wikipedia page is anything to go by, it says that Binary Domain only sold about 20,000 copies in its first two months of release in America, which is terrible. But now we're living in a timeline where these games are coming out in a reasonable fashion here. They're getting announced on the day of reveal that they're coming to the West. They're even getting English dubs again, which only three games from this studio have happened, being Yakuza 1 back in the original release for the PS2, Binary Domain, and Fist of the North Star. So as a huge fan of the studio, I want to tell people to play these fucking games because they're great. But let's back up a bit. In Judgment, you play as Takeyuki Yagami, lawyer turned private eye, as he takes on odd jobs to make ends meet, ranging from finding people's cats, to investigating an unfaithful spouse, to catching a panty thief, to catching stalkers, to rescuing people who've been abducted, along with trying to stop a serial killer going through the streets of Kamurocho, killing people by gouging their eyes out and leaving them in alleyways. Now this video will remain spoiler free, because I do want you to play it yourself, but this will also somewhat work as my own review and thoughts on the game. If you've wanted to get into the Yakuza series, but you feel like it's too intimidating or don't know where to start due to the fact that there's about to be seven mainline games as well as spin-offs, some that are in English and some that aren't, then this is the perfect starting point for you because these games take place in the Yakuza universe and share a lot of systems and things that these games are known for. So you can use Judgment kind of as your gauge of whether you would like this series or not. Use it as you're dipping your toes in the water to see, eh, do I really want to get into this or not? Now for those who have played previous Yakuza games, the combat in this game has multiple styles, that being the crane style and the tiger style. Now I'm going to be upfront and say this isn't my favorite combat from these guys. My favorite is still Majima's three styles from Yakuza 0, but I do think after getting some upgrades, the combat does become fun. My biggest issue is that I feel like tiger is just so much better than crane. Crane is supposed to be fast and have widespread kicks so you could deal with multiple enemies at once, and tiger is supposed to be high damage while focusing on hitting single targets. But once you obtain one of the tiger upgrades that gives you the backhand charge attack that gives you super armor, so it becomes hard to knock you out of it with each upgrade, Crane just became completely invalidated in my eyes. I only used Crane a few times after I got those upgrades, one being the final boss because they're incredibly fast, and one other boss near the end of the game for the same reason. I did love the parkour moves that you could do from bouncing off walls and either hitting square or triangle to do different attacks, though they did kind of just go into random directions sometimes and I really couldn't figure out why? Like the Yakuza series, there's tons of mini games that you could fuck around with all day if you really wanted to and completely ignore the main story. There's Blackjack, Poker, Mahjong, which I always fail because my brain is the size of a peanut, along with Drone Racing, and Pinball, which for some reason is made in the Unity engine and has a Unity logo every time you boot up, so I guess they just couldn't make it in the Dragon engine? I don't know why, but it's really weird and jarring and kind of funny. But sadly, Hunting hasn't made its return, so there won't be any bear fight fighting this time. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the few games from RGG Studios that's actually getting an English dub. Previously, only three other games from them have been dubbed, and I have to say, this dub is excellent. This is going to be one of those games where it comes down to personal preference whether you want to listen to English or Japanese. Though I'm not 100% sure how I feel on the fact that only important stuff is actually dubbed when you play the English version, so main characters and ambient noises that are important to the plot, so like if you're sneaking in you'll hear people yelling in the background, that'll be in English, but random battles, store clerks, the taxi cab drivers, and a bunch of random other shit just isn't in English at all. It's definitely the most effective and efficient way to English dub something if you're on a budget, and if it was between either having no dub or having this half dub, where only important things are dubbed, I would probably go for this, because I know people don't like not being able to listen to things in their own language, and just giving the option to more people to play these games is cool. Greg Chun is Yaga 
Megami and Crispin Freeman as Kaito was the real selling point of what made me keep wanting to actually play the game in English. They play off each other so well. While on the topic of characters and their performances, let's transition to talking about the story. Like other games from Negoshi, the game starts off with a very simple premise, and as more and more plot is revealed, characters within realize their parts and pawns in a much larger scaled scheme. With characters who originally thought to be on your side may have been in it for their own reasons, and may have ulterior motives. And since this is a crime drama, following a lawyer private detective as he hunts down a serial killer interacting with the seedy underbelly of organized crime of Japan along with its corrupt governmental aspects of politics, law, the legal system, and the police force, you'll be dealing with a lot of shades of moral gray. And I think the game does a great job at making each person's point of view understandable. Not forgivable, or even acceptable, but under Understanding, I get why they're doing the horrible things that some of these characters do. Doesn't mean I agree with them, but the fact that the game can make me go, okay, I could see why these events led to this person doing the things that they do. And that's something that the writing should be praised for. But I do find some characters being oddly underused, like the characters of the Genda Law Office. After finishing the main story, I was kind of surprised how little Hoshino, Genda, and Saori are in the game. I really liked what we got from them, and I really wish we got more. For example, at one point Hoshino mentions that he's a third degree black belt, but when you get caught up in a fight and he's with you, you tell him to run away. You don't even get to fight with him. That would have been a cool moment to show off his skills, but I guess it does make sense that Yagami cares more about the well-being and safety of his co-workers and friends, so telling Hoshino to run away is understandable, if not a little disappointing. And since you're a detective slash lawyer, you're going to have moments where you have to present evidence to characters to prove someone's innocence or to catch someone within a lie. I find that these scenes, while cool, are a little too handholdy. There's really no way for you to fail, and it's really evident with one scene near the end of the game, where you have someone captured and you're trying to get them to spill the beans on what's going on, and you go, and this is how you're connected to all of this, and you're supposed to say someone's name and you have to pick from three options. And you'll say one name, and if it's wrong, he'll go, I don't fucking know who that is. And you go, exactly. And that's because, and then you'd have to pick another person's name, and you could do this three times until you get the right choice. It's really funny when these do happen, but I wish the game was less handholdy handholdy and more open-ended to allow you to make these mistakes. Because if you're paying attention to what's going on, then you should realistically never get any of these ever wrong. The only time I got them wrong was when I second-guessed myself because I was thinking too much. But knowing RGG, each time they try something new, even if it is clunky the first iteration, later installments will really get it down. But by far, the worst part of the detective aspects of this game are the tailing missions. And that's because they're all identical. They're all the same. You do the same thing every time. You just just follow a guy, and if they start to turn around, you duck into cover, and you wait for them to turn around and continue to walk. Some of them are so long and boring and drawn out, like the final one of the main story, where you're just walking around the same block in circles, over and over and over again. It makes sense narratively why this person would do this to make sure they're not being followed, but it does not make for fun gameplay at all. If they spiced them up at all, and had anything new, maybe I wouldn't be so harsh on it, but after the third time, you've seen everything there is to do with a tailing mission. It also doesn't help that the game freaks out and starts playing the alert music as soon as the game loses sight with the target. You can be still following them and be right in front of them, but if the camera is obscured by, let's say, a pillar from a building or a sign from outside of a building or just a crowd of people, I could still see them, but the game thinks I can't, and then it starts flashing and it's like, oh, you gotta find them, you got 19 seconds, and it repeats the same startup of the alert over and over again, and it's fucking annoying. Like every Yakuza game, there are some clear winners and some big stinkers when referring to the sub-stories. There's some really funny ones, like where you have to hunt down a panty thief and then he sniffs some model or some famous lady, I don't know who the fuck she is, panties and he goes super sane and you have to beat his ass. Then there's the ones where you have to chase the guy's hairpiece, like really three times? Did I really need to do that three times? The first time was funny, but like, eh. One of my other biggest gripes with the game comes from side quests, and that's the fact that there is often a lot of pointless dialogue options. There's one that really sticks out in my mind where you have to pay up a hundred thousand yen bill for a single shot at a bar, and the lady goes, you can either pay me or I'm going to stab myself with this big knife I just pulled out of nowhere and scream and make it look like you did it. And then there's two options, you either pay her or you don't. And I think to myself, well, I'm a lawyer, I could easily prove that I didn't do it, this doesn't make sense, this is ridiculous, I'm not gonna pay 
this bitch. So I select the do not pay her option. And then Yagami thinks to himself, what am I doing? I just can't let her stab herself. Then why did you give me the option to say no? If it was never intended to have branching paths or have the story play out at all differently based on my choices, then why is there dialogue? Why is there an option? Just play it out going, okay, here you go. You have to pay her up. And then the rest of the story plays out for the side quest because it doesn't play out if you don't pay her. This happens in a few other cases, but this is the one that sticks out the most. It just really bothers me. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is just pointless dialogue options. Why are they there? Just play it out like it was supposed to. When I see these things, I can't help but think, man, think of all the pointless and wasted work that has to go into translating these lines that ultimately do nothing. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do wish that they kept the judge eye title rather than judgment because the eye motif is a very large thing throughout the entire game. Yagami even early on at the very start goes, my eyes are not fit to judge anyone anymore. I love these cheesy melodramatic lines that the game has, but having eyes being referenced so much throughout the game just makes me wish that they kept the original title of Judge Eyes instead of going with something more generic like Judgment. But the last thing I want to praise this game for is its cutscenes. It's the one thing that the Yakuza devs are so good at. They can make just two dudes talking in a room so interesting as well as making gripping, exciting fight scenes where you can just feel the energy coming from your TV. You get so fucking hype. And without going into spoilers, that's pretty much all I have to talk about. This game, even despite some of its issues, is fantastic. And I definitely recommend any Yakuza fans that haven't picked this up already to get it and anyone who's interested to get into the series to give this a try or just anybody who loves crime dramas. And if you've made it this far into the video, I wanna say thanks for watching. My next couple of videos will be recommendation videos similar to this one. Some about video games, some about manga, some about some anime. Generic YouTuber outro, check out Twitter, Patreon, sponsor in the description. Bullshit. Goodbye.